I'm here at my new house where I'm gonna completely transform this into a sustainable smart house, a more bulletproof one, if you will. At my old house, I had it all set up. I had solar panels, batteries, even these things called hydro panels that made water from air. No outside input at all. So I was really well suited in case anything bad ever happened. And in fact, we did a test one time where we intentionally turned off the grid. We went to our electric panel and flipped the switch, disconnected entirely, and we lasted for five full days off grid with that little system we had going on there. And it wasn't until day five when I went to hit the espresso machine like an addict where everything went dark. It turns out that espresso machines and hair dryers and some of these items that you wouldn't think take a ton of energy eat an absolute ungodly amount of energy. So here at my new house, I wanted to recreate that setup, uh, what I like to call bulletproof kind of setup where if the grid goes down, it doesn't matter. And then all the other appliances, our transportation, everything runs off of this sort of quasi power plant that we build ourselves. Here's the rub though, is that this stuff can be very expensive. Luckily, my house already has solar panels. I have 28 panels, some of them here and some of them on the other side there. This is about an eight kilowatt system, which is pretty good, but it's a 2,400 square foot home that's all one level, which means it takes a lot to heat and cool this entire space. And after moving in, I was completely blown away by how expensive it was to run this house. See, at my old house, we didn't have any bills at all. It was just taxes and fees. It came to about 30 bucks a month. And that included fuel, quote unquote, fuel for two electric cars, right? So we had two EVs plus the house running. Someone was always home and it was basically all paid for, all free. I mean, after the cost of our solar and all that. Here, however, not the case. When we first moved in, we were looking at an electric bill of over $800 per month and a gas bill of over $500 per month. Now, some of that's due to the fluctuation in gas prices due to the war in Ukraine, but some of it also is just how big this house is and how much larger it is compared to our old space. Also, we didn't have our electric rate plan dialed in and we weren't getting the best rates, especially when it came to charging our two EVs. The kids are all bunked up in a room right now, and then we have a room dedicated for my studio. This probably looks familiar to some of you. Then we have two different living rooms, the one with the TV and the one the grown-ups hang out once the kids are in bed. And of course we have the master bedroom and what one day will be my new studio, which now is just a guest room filled with junk. Overall, the space is about a half an acre and we have a pool and a good sized garage. So not a massive place, but a decent sized place for Southern California. Okay, so let's do some math real quick here and figure out how much solar I need to make this kind of run on its own. Currently, our monthly draw of electricity is about 2,000 kilowatt hours. Now, I've only been living here for four or five months now, and so the data I have on it isn't complete. Obviously, in summer, things will be different than winter, but just looking at what we've been pulling, averages and all that, I'm gonna go with 2,000 kilowatt hours a month. Now, my panels are producing between 500 and 1,000 kilowatt hours per month. So let's say that's 750 kilowatt hours per month on average. That means in order to go off grid, we're going to need to basically double the amount of solar panels that we have on the roof right now. As I mentioned, we have 28 panels with an eight kilowatt system. And I'm gonna be looking into this very soon because there's a new law in California that if you don't get this going, it actually has to be installed by April of 2026. But if you don't have the plan submitted before April of 2023, then you'll be bumped up or forward to the next version of the incentive program called NEM 3.0. And that thing is a nightmare. And you will lose about 75% of the incentives, meaning it will totally suck. And since I already have solar, I don't wanna lose the benefits I'm already getting. So I'm gonna act on this quick, but as of right now, it looks like I'm gonna to need to double the size of this at least. So once we have enough solar installed to cover most of our needs, then our next step is to get batteries. And that's why I'm out here is because that's where these guys are going behind me on this wall. And we're actually making a ton of progress on that. So much so that we've already got the batteries here. God, that light is terrible. We've already got the batteries you can see right there from Franklin. And so stay tuned for a video really detailing why I went with this system and all those kind of things. But now with solar and batteries, we essentially have a power plant. We have our own power plant. Then we have to just electrify everything else. And so you already know we have two electric vehicles. That way, if their grid goes down, if the gas shortage happens, whatever, whatever, we make our own fuel. Not only that, because that is kind of a rare scenario, 
we also save a ton of money. In my estimates, when I calculated this before, I was looking at about 70 and 80% savings on fuel alone. So think about that next time you're at the gas pump and you have no control over what happens there. Here, I am the master of my own fate. I can control exactly how much I produce, how much I consume, et cetera, et cetera. But I still need to convert all of our appliances over, and that's where we're gonna have a big expense. For example, this guy right here is a gas dryer. I don't know if I'm gonna switch that over because electric dryers take an epic amount of energy, but that along with our water heater, our gas furnace, and a lot of other appliances are gonna need to switch over in order to really fulfill this dream of being off grid and sustainable. Sustainable in the sense of like, if the grid goes down, it doesn't matter. I can still heat and cool my home. I still potentially have internet. I can still keep my food fresh and heat up water and all the things that are the comforts and joys of living in this modern world, I won't be without in the event that the grid goes down. I also really wanna get rid of this gas stove because last year we had a gas leak and we were without it for a few weeks and we bought this $50 hot plate from Ikea and it worked amazingly well. Now I know this is actually a surprisingly controversial thing. People are in love with their gas stoves. I guess all those influencer campaigns that the American Gas Association put out there are working. But the truth is, is that electric stoves suck. Induction is a completely different animal. So if you haven't heard of that or don't know what it is, you definitely should check it out. I'm gonna do more videos on it in the future because I was blown away at how good this little hot plate we got from Ikea was. And so we're gonna switch everything over to that because it's just so much better and so many other reasons. But that is the big idea here is switch everything over to electric after you first create your own power plan. So that's a lot, I know, more than I can probably tackle in one year, but I want your help here. I want to know which of these projects is the one that you would like me to tackle first. Maybe it's something you're interested in and I can kind of fumble my way through it and fail, and then you can learn from that process, save yourself some time and money, thumbs up there. But let me know in the comments because I want it to kind of be a two-way street here, not just me telling you what I think is right, but also me learning and kind of us going through this together. And if you haven't seen it as well, something I didn't mention was the ability to make your own water. This is possible with a machine like the one I have right behind me here called an Aquafan. It's like an atmospheric water condenser, think fancy dehumidifier. And what it does is you plug it in and it just makes fresh water for your family. I just posted a review of this that you can go check out in this video right here to understand whether or not this will serve you and your family well enough if you have any kind of issues with water at your home. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next time.